Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are working in my sketchbook today and we are going to be painting with gouache. So as you can see, as I'm opening up the sketchbook, the bookmark is actually at the very back of the sketchbook because finally we're on the last page. Okay, so uh, as usual, I actually like to match the front page and the back page together. And what I mean is usually the inside portion of the cover, I do some kind of welcome page that says hello or welcome. And then the back page that usually says bye or goodbye at the end, but I do like them to match. So the spread or the pages prior to this one actually had a bit of marker bleed through. So I decided to do some ballpoint pen sketches to kind of plan out what I wanted to do for the last page. So as you can see, I ended up with this kind of sketch for Wanu and he's kind of holding a book. I thought it'd be nice to have a closing book. I kind of wish I did an open book for the beginning of the, like, I guess like the start of the, the front inner cover, I guess, because I think it would be just a nice thing to tie everything together. But this is kind of the sketch that I have and that is what we are going to be going with. And I'm gonna be working mostly with gouache today, but I prep it the same way. So I'm using the Palette Color Eno and the Prismacolor Color Race to do the sketch. So Palette Color Eno to do the sketch first because it's a little bit lighter, it's also water soluble and it's easier to erase. And then of the Color Race to kind of do my tight lines and it's not water soluble, so it won't disappear when I add my watercolor washes, which is what we are going to be doing now. So I've talked about this in previous uh, gouache sessions that I like to use watercolor to kind of ease my way in, plus to prep the paper a little bit. And it gives me a little bit of an idea to figure out how I want to have the colors and some structure to the actual piece before we commit with gouache. So I decided to put down some lighter tones and colors for the background, which I decided to kind of change a little bit. Now, if you read any of my chicken scratch on the other page, you might have saw that I actually planned out some different color combinations that I wanted to try. I was thinking maybe because the other one kind of has more of a, a morning or day feel that I could do the last page more with a night theme, but I actually wanted to stick with kind of like the lighting to be kind of pretty and kind of scattered on the hair still. So I didn't really want to get rid of that unless I wanted to keep a dark composition or dark color palette with some bright light. I just didn't feel confident enough to actually paint that. So I'm sticking similar to how I did the first one in terms of a color palette. So mostly just greens and I'm gonna take my time to paint in foliage because I always have a hard time doing this. Um, I think next time I will definitely do more planning digitally so I can plan out steps of how I want to paint uh, leaves and foliage in a more foolproof way but i don't hate it as much i think the end result's gonna look nice but we'll, we'll get there when we get there so starting off i kind of have a gradation and a little bit of texture for the leaves on the right side so uh in terms of composition i decided to have it flipped in terms of the opposite from my first page or the front cover uh, and when I say front cover, I'm always referring to the inside because the actual cover and beautiful illustration is done by Tricky Wagon, who is the one who designed this very beautiful and lovely sketchbook. So yeah. Also, it also means that once I finish this one, we will have a sketchbook tour probably on the Wednesday after today. So yeah, you can you can look forward to that, I guess. So in terms of the colors, I decided to lay out the background first just because I most likely know that it's not gonna change value too, too much. So I needed to figure out whether or not white wanted Wanu to be similar in value, kind of brighter or darker, and then I can plan out lighting in the shadows as well. And I really struggled this time a lot with the lighting. So I, I have a hard time because I know I probably should have started with light layers first and I kind of abandoned that really quickly and I decided to paint in the highlights instead of leaving it quite light probably with the watercolor washes so I was a bit lost when trying to do the scattered uh, light effect or like the leaves kind of giving I don't know how to explain it like the lights through the leaves kind of cast the shadow and beautiful lighting on different objects and stuff. I just really love that lighting. So I wanted to do that for Wanu's hair once again, but I don't think I like it um, for a long time. And I will start to add like a little bit of warmth by adding some yellow and I will darken up the hair. And then I start to like it more once we get into adding some of the lines and the details, just because right now, oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about this. I filmed this throughout the day and unfortunately, whenever I decide to use natural light, 
clouds tend to roll in quite a bit which tends to alter the light a lot so yeah sometimes i have really cool lighting and it gets quite dark and sometimes it gets super bright um, in the past i would actually adjust the gain every time uh, when it has changes like that, but because it happens so often, it's kind of annoying to change it back and forth And if I forget to change it, some things become too overexposed So I rather have it to be a little bit darker and cooler at times rather than super bright where it's like Like nothing you can see due to high exposure So yeah, I mostly focused on a little bit of the shadow on the face Which doesn't completely make sense with the arrangement of his bangs and I think it's because when I did the watercolor portion and I was planning out the shadows and the lighting on his face I wanted to have the same kind of leave like leaves and lighting and shadows on his face as well Like I had in the previous one, but I decided to do it as one big shape Which is why it doesn't really match the shape of his bangs I think a little bit later i'm gonna knock it back a little bit so that it follows a little bit more of the shape of the bangs if light was to hit it from a different angle and it would cast such a big shadow on his face uh, but for the most part i actually kept wanu's painting pretty minimal and i wanted to focus mostly on the leaves if anything so like i mentioned i wanted to have this one to be the opposite of the front cover so i have him on the inside page which is not on the back cover so he's on the left side and the previous one was actually on the right side so that they're kind of just on opposite sides and i could have the text on the appropriate pages if that makes sense so i wanted to have goodbye in white on the right side because i have hello in kind of like a light greenish gray color on the left side and I did have plans to make sure that the text was going to be pretty much always on the right side for this But I didn't know how to do it in such a way that would make it stand out nicely up like on top of the green uh, Because there's gonna be a lot of foliage and stuff or at least I was gonna try to make it have a lot of foliage So yeah, that's kind of the plan and for the most part like I said, I kept wanting pretty simple I was just trying to make sure that I enjoyed how the hair looked because I didn't want it to be something I disliked because in the past I I, th I think I mentioned this in, I don't know, the beginning of this video. I never really liked a lot of my goodbye or last pages in a sketchbook because I sometimes do it in such a bad mood where all I care about is wanting to finish the sketchbook rather than making something nice to end on, which I don't think is always needed, but I want to put a little bit more effort into the last page if I can just because I think it's easiest to see like the middle spread, the inside cover and the the backside cover portion and i do think it's kind of cute to kind of match them if i can so i wanted to make sure that they kind of match because i think last time i did akemi i did him and gouache on the front very much like blue um some stars and stuff and then when i did the back cover i did a really quick akemi and alcohol marker and it didn't really match like even color wise and the only one i really liked was the other one i did of wanu where i did kind of like gamer ish kind of aesthetic and it still had some kind of a theme and for the most part i like both the illustrations separately so i thought you know put a little bit more effort here so that i don't dislike it or dislike it so yeah uh, other than just finishing up the line work, I made sure to keep some of the color to bleed through underneath where the pocket is. I think that's another problem I kind of had. Um, I try to shift the binder clips every so often so that I don't leave the stupid white gaps of rectangles everywhere on the page whenever I paint with gouache. But the envelope tends to lift up due to a lot of the moisture and especially when I did um, thicker layers of gouache on top. So I tried my best to put like tape loops underneath the pocket so that it would stay a little bit more flat. But you can see that I have two binder clips at the top of the envelope or I was gonna say envelope uh, top of the pocket and the bottom of the pocket so that I can make sure it kind of closes nicely so yeah but for the most part from the angle that you're seeing it and if you look at it straight on you can't really see the awkward gap um, that's casted from I guess like my brush strokes leading into the underneath portion because I painted enough that it's not too noticeable but if you do lift it up a fair amount you're going to be able to see kind of like the gap between where I didn't paint in the inside portion of the pocket. So when I was doing the leaves actually for the background, I tried to look up some gouache painting of people doing basically leaves and foliage because there's a problem I have with making similar shape leaves all the time which tends to be almost 
the classic teardrop shape, which you can see literally on the left side of Wanu, there's like that little light colored uh, leaf on the side. So I tend to make that shape a lot. And if I do repetitive shapes all the time, it kind of becomes like, not exactly, I don't know. I don't like how uniformed it looked. So I was trying to look at different plants and different foliage that people include into like digital paintings or gouache paintings of uh, a lot of shrubbery or foliage like this. Some, some of them have much more, hmm. I was gonna say like thinner leaves, but pretty much all the leaves are thin. It's just like at a certain angle, they read more horizontal rather than this actual full facing teardrop shape. Um, because if you're reading something flat, it almost appears as a line or something horizontal. So it's much easier for me to do that. And I tried my best to follow the steps of having a gradation from dark to light going from the bottom right hand corner up into the middle ish area. And then as we kind of move up into that area, I kind of picked try to pick the appropriate value for each of the leaves but then i noticed that i didn't really like how many gaps i had so i decided to take the dark green once again and kind of do some random shapes here and there to make sure that some things have a little bit more feeling of depth here and there so it doesn't feel too flat everywhere i don't think well, I think maybe I should have added some more mid-tones to the lighter areas so that it appears to have more of those gaps so it feels a little bit deeper. But I do like the majority of like the bottom right portion of the page. Okay, so planning for the text. I don't think I'm very good at freehanding text with a brush, so I needed a little bit of help. So I decided to write out goodbye in the color, no, the palette color Eno so that we can see it kind of lightly in kind of like that pink color. And then after that, I planned it out on the notebook as well to feel like, do I want to stagger the letters? Do I want to split up the word? Um, or do I just want to put just goodbye on one line and just have it the similar to how the, I have the hello on the front side? But for the goodbye, I did pull out my Artex uh, acrylic paint markers just to get a good base. Now, I was going to do it more like calligraphy-ish style, but I kind of forgot the sequence of doing thinner lines going upwards and thicker lines usually going downwards so that you can have your thick and thin for usually like calligraphy pens and stuff. Because I did do calligraphy a little bit in high school for I think one or two of my projects. And we had to do several uh, sessions of just writing the letters with the dip pens and stuff. Uh, so I forgot about that. I also attempted to do a shadow for the goodbye. It looked really ugly, so I decided to paint leaves back on top so that we can get rid of it. I did have like a drop shadow for the first page, so that's kind of the reason why I even did that. After that, uh, I did paint over the entire white area with gouache so it appears a little bit more opaque. It's still a little streaky and I don't really mind, uh, but after that I decided to take the black acrylic marker which is a little bit more opaque and go over the letters to make it have a drop shadow on the right side of it. Just really thinly so that it can stand out a little bit from the greens. And last but not least, my favorite part is when dust particles capture light. So when they're caught by light, they kind of appear a little bit more like sparkly and kind of ethereal and really just, I don't know, kind of atmospheric in a way. So I'm doing the typical just yellow and light, very kind of whitish dots here and there. Um, you can definitely do splatters, but I don't really want to have any paint spatter look where it's like a streak or anything. So I decided to just go with the simple dots here and there. And then you take an old brush or just a brush you don't mind that it kind of gets beat up in a way. So I decided to dry brush some of that whitish yellow color um, and kind of make it look a little bit more faded and glowing and I love adding this to like gouache paintings and I've done this with acrylic painting because that's where I learned how to do it because I used to do a lot of uh, we did a lot of like night scenes so I did a lot of like glowing lights of street uh, street lights street lamps and like all that stuff like traffic lights and stuff or car lights I would do this for a lot of the, the glowing portions and it looks nice and Dry brush, I feel like is a very safe option for the most part. It's easy to control for myself. So yeah, after I do a little bit of dry brushing here and there, I try to leave as much as I could in, um, but not at too fast of a speed. So you guys can see how I do the dry brushing for the most part. You don't want a lot of wet paint. So you would do a little bit of dry brushing probably on your palette before moving on to your sketchbook so that you don't create a bunch of different little dots and you kind of more or less just beat the brush right on top of the surface so it appears a little bit more wispy and a little bit more airbrushy, any, if anything. 
So uh, after that, I would actually go back in with the original brush and I would add in the lighter portion in the center if I really want it to be super standing out. Uh, sometimes because when I use a different color to do the dry brushing, sometimes it muddies the color a little bit. So just to make sure it remains nice and bright, I'm adding back in white to the center so it looks like it's kind of glowing. And that's pretty much the final details that I did for this little inside cover spread portion for this piece. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me do the inside cover and hopefully you like uh, how they match or if anything happy that I'm finished the sketchbook. It's not any slower than my other sketchbooks but I'm happy it's over because uh, I have a love-hate relationship with this one just because I had a super 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 slow start compared to uh, I guess like the last few pages of the sketchbook which I kind of zoomed through. Um, but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this session and I pretty much I'm going to be filming the sketchbook tour. I've already actually filmed it so yeah a lot of my videos for the sketchbook doodle series is kind of out of order at this point. You guys are going to see a sketchbook tour pretty much several several weeks after probably I finished the sketchbook, so apologies about that, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video though. Bye!